It's great to have you here on the Clark Howard Show, where our mission is to serve you and empower you so you make better financial decisions in your life. One way we're available to serve you is through the Team Clark Consumer Action Center, where you can get free one-on-one advice from a member of Team Clark available to you 30 hours each week. You can see how to get that at clark.com slash C-A-C. In this episode, I want to know, how do you feel about ads that follow you around everywhere? Surprisingly, polling shows a lot of Americans not only have gotten used to it, they actually like it. Isn't that something? And I want to tell you something else. TVs are even figuring out how to send us ads directly focused on us. That's something that is going to freak some people out, even if you think ads following you around on the internet is okay. Later, I've got some really great news for teens looking for jobs for the rest of spring and certainly this summer. It is a great time to be a teen looking for work. So, Ads following you around is something that we've talked about a lot about, you know, incognito browsing, uh, private browsing, whatever. When you're on the internet, uh, Google, as I shared with you a few weeks ago, got in trouble, uh, got, is having to pay restitution for having pretended that people's Searching was private when they were in incognito mode, but then actually continuing to spy on them. And now that data is being wiped out and all that. But everywhere you turn, like I just alluded to the TVs, you are being tracked in what you uh, watch, what you read, what you do. Uh, my wife, as I shared with you like uh, two months ago, was trying an experiment because she uses Instagram a lot. And, you know, Instagram is following everything you do everywhere. And so she was talking about something that made nonsense, but just talking about something to see if ads would start popping up for what she was talking about, meaning that they were listening to just regular conversation in the room. And either it's a coincidence or even your voice just routinely in a conversation is being tracked. Sure enough, in not that many minutes, ads started popping up for what she was talking about. And so this kind of thing is kind of freaky about what's going on. And with the TVs being able to track you, this is why Walmart bought Vizio. So they could track and serve ads. And the TVs are doing so. Roku is actually testing a technology where when your TV is idle but on, that it will be able to continue to serve you ads that are focused and targeted towards you. And this was sent to us by a listener named Doug in South Carolina, an article about what Roku is doing to be able to serve these ads. So when you live a digital existence and you're on your smartphone and you're watching a smart TV, all these things are tracking what you do and what you're interested in. And they are going to provide you these hyper-targeted ads. My feeling is, as I felt years ago, when this first started happening, and I'm going back into the era of the dinosaurs, when we had dial-up internet, and there was the tracking going on. And if you're a longtime listener, you know I, I uh, both me and Krista, or Krista and I, English major, I hope I... Krista and I, not me and Krista. What's Krista the rest of the segment? Both Krista and I. Krista and I verb. used. Um, yes, I used internet services that 
we got for free in return for being served ads based on what websites we were going to. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first thing, but, but we did it in return for free. Right. And we, even before that, I want to go back to more dinosaur days in the days of long distance charges and pay phones. So you oh, the that, freeway phone yeah, service? Was listen, it called freeway? Freeway. You'd listen to ads and then you could have a long distance call for a certain amount of time. So when you signed up with freeway, you had to answer a bunch of questions about your interests and things like that. And, you know, you, you like this sport or you don't like that or you like this kind of movie or whatever, music. And then you would listen to ads that were 15 seconds long. And you listened to as many ads as you wanted. And every ad got you two free minutes of long distance. And the worst, you thought you might be doing a 20-minute call. Oh. And so you'd listen to 10 15 second ads and they wouldn't and then the answer. call would would be busy <laughs> or they didn't answer and you listen to all those ads and got no free minutes out of it so you and I have always made this cost benefit mm -hmm. between the uh, use of something getting it for free right. the long distance the internet dial up whatever and giving up privacy certainly and time with the with the freeway calling Today, this is happening to us, and what are we getting for it? In many cases, we're not getting anything. Or you have to pay to not have ads like YouTube, for example. YouTube, well, you're talking about for programming. Yeah. But I'm talking about um, the tracking. Right, the tracking on. on the web, I know. But I'm just yeah. saying like that. that's what everything's turning to. You have to pay to not be. So I. So if you think about... It's funny when something seems good and when it seems bad. So having to pay to not be spied on or instead to get something free and saying you can be spied on. It's funny how you and I were both like, yeah, mm -hmm. spy on us. Give us something for free. But then the same idea for me of paying to not be spied on, that when you put it the opposite way, it feels funny to me. But the reality is we are being spied on all over the place. And, and it is clearly an invasion of privacy. And I, I have to say, I'm kind of with some of the people who say they don't mind the tracked ads, or in my case, cookies. Um, I do allow cookies on sites that I go to a lot because I want to be able to sign like in. Because you like sugar cookies, chocolate chip <laughs> cookies. What are, what's your favorite kind of cookie? Uh, I try not to eat cookies because I am absolutely addicted to sugar, but chocolate chip would be my my arch nemesis cookie. So, you know, what was I saying? I could, oh, I allow cookies because I want it to remember who I am. I, I want it to, you know, have my login. I, I allow certain things like that and I don't mind it, tra certain sites tracking me. So I, I'm willing to do it in some cases. And you do get served ads that are more in line. If like, you know, some site has like horrible ads, I don't want to see, I don't know. I don't mind it that much. Well, our first question is based on the consequences of all the tracking that goes on. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Let me. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me today, Clark Howard. I think I'm a little out of it. I need, I need more coffee. All right. Oh, wait. We got to talk about what happened with the coffee. So Krista, in order to reduce spending in her life, uh, got this fancy coffee machine that makes her like strong shots of coffee in the morning i make americanos it can do lattes it's awesome i and, bought it in december of 2019 and so you're saving so much money but today you were running late and you stopped at corporate coffee well i was running late but yeah i couldn't make mine i stopped at starbucks i bought a an americano and theirs is not as strong as what it's you not make as at good. home it's just not as tasty yeah but it's, so you're kind of still in that morning fog yeah i think it's this i think you're right i think that's what it is i didn't have my my delicious homemade brew and you spent all that money think about it, you're gonna have to retire two years later because you bought this starbucks coffee please today. forgive me all right, Deborah in Alabama says, please let me know what is involved in the Roku breach and what do I need to do? So this is Roku's second breach of late that they know of. And it is a breach that affected, by the latest telling I've seen, 550,000 Roku users. And they have 
the most dangerous information they may have is if you buy programming through Roku and there's a credit card stored there and a criminal uses your credentials, they could be buying programming and charging it to your credit card. This breach seems that that's the greatest vulnerability. So if you have a Roku device and you have purchased programming at some point, a subscription to this this other streaming service or whatever through the Roku platform, that's your greatest risk, Deborah. So uh, you want to look really closely each month moving forward. I always tell you, look at your credit card statements every month. Especially important right now with whatever credit card you used on the Roku platform because that's the gold that the criminals are looking for. They may also, having access to that, use that credit card for online shopping and other things. And so that is the key vulnerability as to who the half million plus people are who were breached in this Roku. I don't know if they've informed individuals yet. Um, I have Roku as a platform. I've received no communication. And it takes a while for those letters to come out. So I think every Roku user should assume that they are one of the breach victims from the first breach or this more recent breach and monitor that credit card really closely. Matthew in Tennessee says, a family friend received a terrifying scare today. This reminded me of what you talked about last, just last week with the AI voice cloning. While her seven-year-old daughter was supposed to be at a friend's house, she received a call from her daughter screaming and crying, help mommy, the bad man has me and they're hurting me. My friend was terrified, but when her daughter kept repeating herself, she realized it must be AI, hung up and confirmed her daughter was safe at her friend's house. Oh my goodness. But she's a nervous wreck now, of course. Yeah. She's not a famous or rich person and she keeps her socials private, yet these monsters perfectly cloned her daughter's voice, found her phone number and knew when she was out of the house that's terrifying. I've heard of this scam before and I've seen it growing more and more as AI takes over the world. And as the tech gets be better, it will be even harder to tell if it's a computer. Is there nothing we can do? Is this just like robocalls, something to expect from now on? At least for a while. And this is, I mean, how cruel uh. an individual would be behind this that would create that kind of visceral fear in a parent of a precious seven year old child? Yuck. So terrifying. Uh, so. This is unfortunately a wave that's, that is coming, and you need to know that any call of desperation you get from what appears to be or sounds to be a loved one, a friend, a grandchild, a child, whatever, you got to know that today it's all about creating the sense of urgency and the sense of visceral fear so that you will... Do exactly what you're told to do by the purported criminal who supposedly has kidnapped the individual or that they're in the hospital or in a wreck or whatever. And you're going to have to, before you take that next leap of giving money, sending money, whatever, buying the gift cards for them and giving them the codes off of them, you're going to have to independently verify that this bad event has occurred. Many times it'll be as simple as making a phone call to that individual who supposedly is in trouble and they'll answer and say, hi, why are you calling today? Whatever, because almost always, I mean, people can get a, a phone call about a tragedy or a terrible circumstance or something as awful as a kidnapping, but kidnapping is extremely rare. Mm -hmm. Almost always, and with the aid of AI, these are going to be scamsters creating a false scenario to try to steal your money. Yeah, Matthew, I mean, the only thing I could suggest is families especially have like a secret code word that you share with everyone. And if it's really you, you know the code word. I mean, I've decided to do that with my extended family. Really? In case there's ever an emergency. Yeah. That's a really smart idea. Thank you. Okay, Mike in Ohio I think says. We're going to change this to the Krista podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, 
It'd be a real short podcast. <laughs> Mike in Ohio says, I received a notice of a proposed settlement resulting from the Real Estate Commission settlement. The mailing assigns a unique ID and provides a website to file a claim. The website is realestatecommissionlitigation.com. While the website seems to be legitimate, I was not able to find anything online about it. When I saw Zelle was listed as an option oh, for receiving goodness. payment, I knew exactly who to ask. <laughs> 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 Get your money another way, Vizel. This is the legit site uh, from one of the lawsuits involving the um, the collusion of price fixing of commissions in the real estate industry. And so restitution is coming to people in certain classes who uh, purchased or sold a home in a period of time. And more often it's for the seller. And so this is a legitimate thing. Just don't use Big Bad Zell as the platform to get your money because you actually want to get the money and not have to worry about what other terrible things could happen using Zell. Uh, if you're not, if you're a new listener to our podcast and you don't know all the problems with Zell, just go to any search engine you use and put in Zell and the word scam next to it or scams. And you'll see that the banks, in fear of non-bank actors, set something up without thinking through how to protect their bank customers. And Zelle is like a Trojan horse to your bank account that makes it so easy for criminals to steal your money. But the uh, real estate commission settlements are real. But any notice you get, you want to do... Just what we're talking about here, like Mike, you want to do third-party verification that the website that is writing you or the letter you're receiving or the email you receive is legit from a real settlement and not somebody trying to steal your money. Because you think about, let's take the Zelle example. If you file at a fake website and you've given them your information, They'll use it to steal money from you instead of deposit money to you. And that's a scary thing for sure. Coming up ahead, I want to talk about something really great. And that's the prospects for jobs for teens the rest of this spring and this summer. Best ever. So there are a lot of retailers that specialize in getting money out of teenagers and these websites are all reporting uh, all these retailers either they're online or physical are generally reporting bad sales numbers for the most recent quarter to wall street because teens are spending less money teens are spending less money because in the united states now only a third of teens have their own job so the bank they go to is the bank of mom and dad. And a lot of parents are feeling more financial stress from the after effects of inflation. And there's not as much allowance or uh, mom, can I have 20 bucks kind of thing going on. There's not as much money flowing from parents to kids right now, which means that there's a two for benefit here because a teen has the best prospects ever, ever in my lifetime to get a job right now and one that pays well. You know, I, when I was 16, I worked in a warehouse and I made $1.60 an hour. And so I went on one of those inflation calculators to see what that would equate to in today's dollars. It was $12.33 an hour. Today, a teen can go out and earn more than that. And there were years that teens were earning uh, at the minimum wage, in some states even below the federal minimum wage. Today, that's not happening. Teens can earn a really good hourly rate at any of a number of possible jobs. And a lot of jobs that rely on teens, like last summer, they were begging for workers. They could not fill positions. 
because so many teens are not working, this is a real opportunity for you as a teen if you want to work. And so have your own spending money. And remember this, if things are tight for your parents, let's try some guilt here. If things are tight financially for your parents, go earn your own money. Go do it. The advantage of you getting work experience under your belt and understanding what it's like to be on the other side as an employee and understand in a work environment, you'll work places that you'll get uh, lessons about how not to treat people. You'll get lessons how to treat people. And something else I find that, that is a real benefit when a teen works a job, almost always it's going to be a service job. It's not going to be like me working in a warehouse. You're going to see how other people behave as customers. And it will ch potentially change how you think about it when you're a customer and how you'd want to be treated as an employee that you in turn will remember that when you're on the other side of the equation as a customer. But the money could be really good. I mean, it's not going to be California good where the minimum you're likely to make is 20 bucks an hour. But 15 is totally within reach this summer. And if you want to get a jump start, go out there and get something now. And the earlier you do it, the more opportunities there are, the more wide open the job market is. So two-thirds of teens aren't working right now. Join that third that is. Because let me tell you, employers need you. You and I have both been about our kids working as teens. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and my son, unfortunately, was working at my gym, which just closed. So <laughs> he's looking for a new job. So I'll have him listen to this segment. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Clark can encourage him. I will encourage him. Ross in South Carolina says, Hi, Krista and Clark. You both mentioned that you use Schwab as your main bank of choice. In the past, I recall Clark saying that Navy Federal was his top choice for using a checking account. Maybe it was for Lane. Or in the context of his family being a Navy Federal family. That info was a little bit blurry for me. The interest rate of 0.45% interest at Schwab seems better compared to the tiers of Navy's flagship checking. Just curious if your perspective has changed on where to hold money in a checking account. So I do have a Navy Federal, gosh, I've got credit card, two CDs, money market account, checking account. I've got all these things. And what I do is the... Navy Federal money market account pays a much better rate of interest, obviously, in their checking. So I keep minimal amounts of money in the checking account. And when I need to, I replenish it from the money market account. Navy Federal is a secondary account for us. And my wife, uh, one of my kids, and I all, oh, no, two of my kids are Navy Federal. And so we found them to be a really great place, it's the world's largest credit union, to have banking type stuff, but our main activity is at Charles Schwab. Stella in Georgia says, last year I had a car accident. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We were treated at a hospital. Since that incident, the bill has been paid and the confirm I have the confirmation from the hospital. This week, I received a bill from a company for over $600, stating this is for emergency services Wait provided. Wait a minute, almost a year later? Mm -hmm. Emergency services provided uh, by the physician on duty. They also offered a reduction if I would pay early. I assumed my bill from the hospital included everything. How do I resolve this issue? When I called the hospital, the person who answered said that they deal with this company, but my statement said paid in full. Stella, you're going to hate this. Okay, so a lot of hospitals are farming out different functions, including in the emergency room. They will staff the emergency room doctors from an outside firm or a contract firm. And then you get... Uh, your bill from the hospital for hospital services rendered. And then you also get a bill from outside vendors like this uh, contractor 
for the emergency room physicians. I want to say to you, I hope that you have fully recovered from the auto accident. And I don't know from what you said, if you had coverage for uh, medical in your auto insurance policy, what in many states may be referred to as med pay, or if you have health insurance. In either case, this bill is for them, not for you. And you were due to pay your copay or whatever for it if it involves insurance. The amount billed, the emergency room physician company may or may not be if it's a, if you're in a plan where you have in network charges out of network charges they may not be in your network however because of the no surprises act the reason they're offering you a discount is the bill will probably be crunched down based on no surprises the steps you need to follow first is uh, and you know this i don't did you have insurance from auto or from health insurance that was involved in your bills for the hospital, this would be something you submit through that process, whichever one. Uh, second, if you don't have insurance, this is coming back on you, then you do negotiate that bill. They're offering you a discount because they're worried a year out, you're gonna say, I'm not paying. Uh, so making a deal is what you'd want to do if you are a cash payer. So they made an opening offer to you of a reduction in the bill. That's just an opening offer. You now can counter. But before you pay them anything, again, this is if you're a cash payer, before you pay them anything, you want to make sure you have an email from them or a letter saying that payment of whatever amount you agree to is payment in full for their services rendered. Because otherwise, you could pay an amount, and then later, they could come back and say, oh, well, uh, you didn't pay these many hundreds of dollars you owe us, so now we're coming after you for that too. That's why you have to have it in writing in some form or fashion, and email is just fine too. This is from Zach in Texas. Thank you so much for all the advice, especially regarding how to deal with rental car companies. After a business trip to Delaware in February, due to your warnings, I stayed hyper aware of what I agreed to with the car rental company and watched my statements closely for any charges. Sure enough, a month after returning my vehicle, a charge of over $100 came in through for tolls. With which I should this should only have been around twenty five dollars. I tried calling the number provided and was literally sent through a loop in the auto attendant. I called your consumer action center and was given some advice, including a good phone number for the company. After calling the good number and providing all the information you and your team advised, I was reimbursed for the $75. That's fantastic. In the past, I may have just let this go, but not anymore. Thank you for inspiring me to take a little time out of my day to avoid getting ripped off by the greedy car rental industry. Zach, I mean, the number of complaints we get about car rental companies is by far, by far and away the highest that I've ever experienced in 37 years of doing this. I mean, it is crazy what's going on now that the car rental industry is controlled by three cartels. And uh, these stray charges just coming out of nowhere is a big problem. On the tolls, um, we've talked in the past about getting a portable multi-state toll reader if you travel regularly I have one from the Central Florida Toll Authority that works in almost all states up and down the eastern seaboard and now more states in the Midwest. And so you buy this toll reader and then every time you get in a rental car, you register it on the app to that car's plate or tag. And then when you return the vehicle, make sure you unregister that plate or tag or else you'll be paying the next traveler's tolls and the next one after that and the next one after that as we heard from several people who've experienced that but that is a way for you to avoid the toll ripoff so uh, having said all that about the tolls and the car rental industry and uh 
you know, the car rental industry behaving badly, all that stuff. Um, I want to tell you, most time you rent a car, everything will go fine. You'll return the car. There will be no crazy charges. Everything I talk about, about videoing the car before you receive it, before you leave the car rental plaza with it, videoing it with your phone when you come back, taking thorough pictures, refusing to leave the lot with a car that has damage to it, all those things. These are preventatives to prevent having to fight after the fact. The best thing to do is prevent a problem from occurring or to be able to fight back properly when a problem does occur. And that's why you take these precautions because it is an industry that is looking to abuse your wallet and you don't want to let that happen. So thank you so much for joining us today. Remember what we're about for your wallet, giving you ideas and ways for you to save more, spend less, and avoid getting ripped off. And see you tomorrow.